Yes, sir. You're coming across the track, you got a ride up there on your hands. Huh? You got a ride on your hands up there? Uh-uh, not yet, not yet. All the cows went dry this morning, so he's milking the bulls. Coming across the tracks now. Two cream. I ain't got no cream. You ain't got no cream. Set up here for nothing, man. Dang pints, my bottles didn't come in. I told them we could have filled I'll be down there Thursday. <laughs> come on, they'll be in there. Yes, sir. I come up here 52 weeks out of the year. I do not miss a Saturday. None of them. All Saturdays of the year. Makes you feel good. It does. I appreciate it. People want you. that four blues. Four blues. Thanks, sir. We depend heavily on this market for, for us to be able to make it, you know. We probably do more business here than we do everywhere else combined. It'd be 20. Yeah, he's ahead of me all the time. Isn't he? <laughs> they want to they wanna know that farmer. I really believe this. They want to know that farmer and get to know him. You having a good week? I did. Good. Yeah, Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. How many do you need? I need seven. Seven reds. And I'm buying I think I'm buying a bottle. Okay. All right, two reds. Thank y'all. There's something just intrinsically good feeling about knowing where the milk came from. Thank y'all. Thank you. you have a good day. One red. One red. There were so many independent dairies at one time, and now there are almost none, uh, at least in the state of Mississippi particularly the risk that it takes uh, to do what he's doing. Um, that's why a lot of people haven't done it. And you've got to have the milk to be able to sell it. And that's, that's the fine line that we walk all the time, is having enough milk, but not too much milk. And it's always going to be hard. It's weird, huh? You can't never really predict the market no, now. No, you can't. Saturday is probably my favorite day of the week. A little more laid back. You know, I really want to figure out some way that I can farm for myself full time, have enough cows to be able to support my family. My wife, Paula, she, she trusted me uh, with this idea. Well, she's very much a partner. I, I couldn't do it without her. There's no way that I could go out there and do everything that needs to be done. It's just, it wouldn't happen. And I remember laying in bed, he just kept talking about it, and I said, let's decide right now. Either we're fixing to jump in with both feet, or we're getting off. We've been farming for ourselves full time for four years now. The dairy is pretty routine. Every single morning when I get up, I go straight out to the barn and I start getting ready and I milk cows. And that's 365 days a year. Come on, Katie. Uh, 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 uh. Come on, Katie. Come on. This is all of our raw milk is in here. My whole thing was to bottle some milk produced in this county on some, uh, some nice little Jersey cows that were treated right, you know, and have a local product.
There's so many places I gotta be and so many things I gotta do. I spent a lot of time driving. We're at the farmer's market store here in Oxford. This milk we bought all this morning came out of a cow yesterday, and now here it is already in the store. We're gonna go. All right, see, you see you later. All right, bye-bye. Friday's so busy for loading milk up, we'll use this ice to ice down our milk to get ready to go to the market. Cooling milk down, we use a lot of ice. Our ice machine is broken down. Pump went out. Can't get one till Monday, so we come up here to get this. It's expensive, but you got, I mean, you get, we use a lot of ice, you gotta have it. Why can't we produce milk right here in this state and consume it? Why does our milk have to come as far away as, as New Mexico? It may be delivering milk, or you may be out in the fields all day cutting hay, or, or hauling cattle, you haven't haul hogs to the process. You wear a lot of different hats. I gotta be responsible for all that stuff. I drive close to a thousand miles a week, literally. I mean, we got all we can handle right now. But I still won't quit. When opportunities come up, I'll take them. To see our milk to end up at Hughes, and then him take our milk and, and make that product that he's making and see it come right back into my community. That's a really good feeling. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. All right, buddy. I always said any farmer ought to be able to let somebody come to their farm anytime and be proud of what they're doing and to see how everything is going on their farms. Hey, you're here to see Coach Glass. Hey, how are you? All right, let's go see her. If these people are buying our milk, I want them to come out here and see these cows, see how these animals are treated. Hey, Coach Glass. Oh. I know. Here's your namesake. How sweet. Hey, Bubba. Come on. Come on. Come here. We're going to get you a bottle in a minute. And she just sits down right there and takes her little bottle with Coach Glass. Oh, sweet baby. I've been waiting for a long time, haven't I? All right, this is gonna be for Facebook. Is okay, that all right with you? That's good. One. Look at that. That's gonna be great. And most of the time, Harris doesn't get to name the girls. We do. Y'all do. At Lafette, you know you've made it when you have a cow at Brown's Dairy. Yeah. This is so cool. Um. Even though I may be over there in the milk parlor, my kids can come in and talk to me. I can come out here and play baseball for a few minutes, or we can go down here and go fishing for a little bit. So that's made everything a lot better. All their friends that come over, I mean, they think this is a amusement park. I really like that, that we can kind of share this farm with them. But they just have fun. There's so much imagination that could go on.
I think Friday evenings, you would see him walking around stressing out, scratching his head. He can't, he'll always say, you don't understand, you don't understand. I can't tell him, no, you're never up there. I seen my dad do the same thing. Well, you know, he was a writer, he was a fireman, but he wanted to be a, a writer. And I watched that man work and work and work. And I guess I have some of that same determination he had because I wouldn't have never quit. There's nothing I hate more than going to that market, going to Hernando, and people are in line, and, and you know that you're low when you get there, and it just gets busier and busier, and those coolers keep coming out of the truck, and you're looking, and you're thinking, how many's left, how many's left? And then Bubba says, that's it, there's no more.